Hi everyone, my name is Kevin. Today I wanna to show you how you can use Microsoft Power Automate. And before you run off because it sounds like a complicated name, stick around because with Power Automate, you can simplify your life and then cut down on the number of manual tasks that you do in your life. As full disclosure, before we jump into this, I work at Microsoft as a full-time employee. So to make it real, let me give an example. So I run this YouTube channel here and just about every day I upload a video to YouTube. Now, not only do I upload a video to YouTube, I also then post about that video on Twitter. So that's a manual task that I have to do every single day. With Power Automate, what I could do is Power Automate will look at YouTube, see that I uploaded a new video, and then it'll automatically tweet on Twitter on my behalf. So it simplifies and cuts out one of the manual tasks that I had been doing. And best of all, it requires no coding knowledge at all. Anyone could jump in, create an automation task, and then have Power Automate work on your behalf. And I'll show you step-by-step step how you can do that. If you've ever heard of If This Then That or IFTTT.com, it's similar to that, but it also has some more advanced functionality. Now today, I'm gonna to show you how you can use the free consumer version of it. There is also a premium version that you could use with work or school accounts that costs some additional money, but I'm gonna show you how you could use the free one, and it offers tons and tons of functionality that can really help make your life easier. All right, well, enough talk. Why don't we jump on the PC, and I'll show you how, first off, you could get started with Power Automate. Here I am on my PC, and to get to Power Automate, let's head to the website office.com. Once you land on office.com, go ahead and click on the sign in button. This will bring us to the sign in page. If you already have a Microsoft account, you could go ahead and type it in here. If you don't yet have an account, don't worry, you could create one and it won't cost you anything. It's free to create an account and you could do that right here. Once you either sign in or you create an account, and then sign in, you'll land on the authenticated version of office.com. Now, some of the things that you could do on office.com, not only can you get to Power Automate, but you also have all of these other productivity tools. For instance, you get Outlook for email, you get free cloud storage with OneDrive, you also get the well-known productivity tools, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, amongst others. One thing you might notice is there is no Power Automate as part of this initial set. To get there, we're gonna click on All Apps. This brings up the All Apps screen, and here too, you might notice that there is no Power Automate. Previously, Power Automate was known as Flow, and currently, the, it still refers to Flow, so we're gonna use this to launch Power Automate. Now, if you're in any other app throughout the Microsoft 365 ecosystem, so let's say you're in Outlook or maybe you're in Word and you wanna to get to Power Automate, you can also get there through the app launcher or what I like to refer to as the waffle because it kind of looks like a waffle here. You could click on that. That'll launch up the default set of apps. And here too, I could also click on all apps. And then here you'll see flow right here. So either way will get you to Power Automate. So let's go ahead and click on that. And this drops us on the home page. Here we are on the Power Automate homepage, and let's take a moment to look at what's on the homepage. Here at the very top, you'll see that there are a few sample automations that you can try out. Down below that, you also see some featured template collections. So these are groups of templates relating to different areas. And then you also see a sampling of different services that you could run automations on. Now, to really make it real, I wanna go back to the example that I shared at the beginning. So I, I have this YouTube channel, and every time I post a video, I want a tweet to go on Twitter that announces the video. So let's see if Power Automate can help me with this. And so the easiest way to get started is, in the search box up here, I'm gonna type in YouTube, because this is the app where I'm gonna post the video, and I wanna see if there are any existing automations that I could simply use. So I'm gonna go ahead and let me put in YouTube right here, and then I'm gonna search. Once I search for YouTube, one thing that I see is these are all of the different automations that already exist related to YouTube. So what I could do is I could go through these different cards and see all what I can do or what others have already created. Now the nice thing about Power Automate and sharing these existing automations is chances are what I'm looking to automate 
other people have also thought about automating, in which case it really makes it easy for me because I could simply reuse what others have done. And in fact, on that topic, right up here in the top left-hand corner, I see an automation that already exists that says, share YouTube video on Twitter. That sounds like what I want to do. So let me click on that and let's try this out. So here, if I look at more of the details, here it says, when you upload to YouTube, share your video via Twitter. You can customize your tweet message. Well, that sounds exactly like what I want to do. That's great. And down here, it says, this flow will connect to both YouTube and Twitter. Now, one of the things that you need to do is as you connect to these different services, you need to sign in to these different services. And I've actually already gone ahead and done that, but I signed into YouTube, typed in my username, my password, and I also signed into Twitter, typed in my username and password. And the little green check mark indicates that it's a valid connection. Next, I'm gonna click on continue. On the next page, I see a visual showing me what's gonna happen. It says, when I upload a video, so that's the trigger, then down below, I see what the action is. It's going to post a tweet. And here, I can modify what the tweet text is. It says, check out this new YouTube video I uploaded, and then it inserts a link to the video. If I click into the text box, I see some other dynamic content that I could also include as part of the tweet. So in this case, I already have the web link included, but if I wanted to, I could also include the video's title, the description, the title of my channel. So lots of different types of content that I can pull in. One thing I could even do is let's say that when I upload to YouTube, not only do I want it to post a tweet, but maybe I wanna have it send out an email to certain people, or maybe I want it to also post to Facebook. I could go ahead and I could also add additional steps but in this case, I'm satisfied just posting a tweet on Twitter, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on save. Congratulations, the new flow has been created and you just created your very first flow. Now to go see all the flows that I have, over on the left hand side, I could click on my flows. And when I do that, I'll see a list view of all of the different flows that I have. Now in this case, I just have one showing up here. One of the things I could do is I could click on this and this will bring me to a summary view of my new flow. Here I could see things like my 28 day run history. So every time it runs, I'll see a record of that. I could verify that my connections are still working. And some of the things I could also do is let's say I could, I wanna delete the flow because I no longer need it. I could do that. I could even turn it on or off. So let's say I wanna take a little break from Twitter. I could turn this off and it'll no longer run. In this example, I showed you how you could create a new flow from a template. I also wanna show you how you could create a new flow from scratch. And to do that, we're gonna work our way down on the left-hand side here. And next, I wanna click on Create. Within the create view, I have a few different options. I can start from blank, so start a new flow from scratch. And in a moment, we're gonna walk through what each of these options does, and I'll show some examples. Down below, and this is something we just did, we started from a template. This is by far the easiest way to create a new flow. And down at the bottom, you can also start a new flow from a service or an app or what's called a connector, and you could start from there. So let's go back up to the top, and I'm gonna walk through some of the different ways you can start a new flow. The first way is an automated flow, and this is what we just did with YouTube. That's called an automated flow. Essentially what that means is anytime some, some trigger occurs, so in this case I upload a video to YouTube, flow will take some action-based on that, in which case it tweets to Twitter. So why don't we jump in and I'll show you how you could also start off with just a blank automated flow. So if I click on this, I can name it and maybe I'm gonna call this YouTube to Twitter. So I'll show you how I could also start this just from scratch. And here it says, well, what is your trigger? In my case, it's on YouTube. So I'm gonna search for YouTube. And then you see the different triggers that are available. So when a video is uploaded by a channel, when I upload a video or when a new video matches a search. So there are a few different triggers that I can use. In this case, I wanna go with when I upload a video. So I'm gonna create the same flow as what I did before. And then I'll click on create. 
Now here, because it's not a template, it doesn't have the Twitter step, but I could go ahead and click on new step. And within here, I could search connectors. And in this case, I wanna to connect to Twitter. So I'm gonna type in Twitter. And here I see Twitter is one of the connectors. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And now when I upload a video, I could take a variety of different actions. In this case, I wanna post a tweet. So I'm gonna click on that. And here I could type in text. And then similar to before, I could also add dynamic content. So maybe I wanna put in the video link and then at this point I could go ahead and save this and just like before now if I click into my flows I'll see now that I have two flows set up so that's how I could have set that one up manually now let me go back to create I want to show an example of an instant flow with an instant flow, I need to manually trigger the flow. So let's say by clicking on a button and then that'll kick off a flow. Now this compares to the previous example where it was an automated flow where I upload a video and then the flow automatically runs because Power Automate detects that trigger. So in this case, one of the things is uh, sometimes my wife will come by and she'll ask me to say take out the trash or do something else around the house, but I might be in the middle of doing something, in which case I forget to do that task and then I get in trouble later. So it might be nice to have a button that I could click on and then it'll remind me in say 10 minutes to take care of whatever that task was. So in this case, I'm gonna simply add a flow button for mobile and by clicking on this button, that will trigger the flow. Let me go ahead and click on create. And here, so that's the trigger, I click on a button, and now I could add a new step. And maybe what I wanna do is I want to, let's say, delay the message for, let's say, 10 minutes, and so I'm gonna type in delay, and here I see a connector called schedule. So let me click on that, and here schedule has an option to delay. Let me click on that, and now I could specify how long I want the delay to be, so maybe I'll say 10 minutes, that should be enough time, and the unit is minutes. And now let me add an additional step because it's gonna, first off, I trigger it, then it waits for 10 minutes. And what I wanna have happen then is maybe I wanna get a notification. So I'm gonna click on notification. And here I could either get an email or a mobile notification. I think a notification, just a mobile notification is probably good enough to remind me. And I'll click on that. And now I can type in the notification message. So maybe I'll say, follow up on what the wife asked about and that should remind me what my task is and now i'm all done so i'm going to go ahead and click on save and i now have another flow and once again if i click on my flows here i can see that i now have this flow and it's currently active let me go back to create and i want to show how we can create a scheduled flow and just like the name implies i could schedule a flow to happen at a certain time or a certain interval. Now, one of the things is every year, my mom's birthday comes around and I hate forgetting that it's her birthday. That doesn't look too good when I forget. So here I'm gonna call the flow birthday and what I could do is my mom's birthday is on April 30th. So I'm gonna select April 30th and maybe we'll do it at noon. So right in the afternoon, and what I could do then is maybe I'll repeat every, let's say 12 months. So basically every year this flow will run. So now let me go ahead and create it. Now this type of flow is great. Let's say you work as an admin and every month you need people to submit their expense report. You could have it automatically send out an email every month. So you no longer have to remember to do that on your own. So here I set up the recurrence and I'll click on add a new step. And here I could click on mail and send an email notification is the action. So the recurrence, that's the trigger, the timing, and then the action is some uh, to send an email. And here in this case, let's see, I'll just type in an email address. Pretend this was my uh, mom's email address so I could type that in. And then I could say, happy birthday mom. And let me put in some text in the body. And here I could say, I love you so much. Down below, I can also show advanced options and here I could add additional uh, C people on the CC line or the BCC line. So maybe if I have some siblings and I wanna make them jealous that I remembered it was my mom's birthday, but maybe they didn't remember, I could BCC them just to let them know that I emailed mom and maybe give them a heads up that maybe they should do the same. 
Uh, so all of this looks good. Let me go ahead and save this flow now. And once again, I'll click into my flows. And here you can see that I have my birthday flow set up. I also have my wife reminder flow and I have my YouTube flow set up. One of the things you'll notice is my life is getting simpler. I, I feel less weight on my shoulder as I add these flows because I no longer have to remember these things. I no longer have to do these things. It's really making my life easier. I'm gonna click back into create. Now there are two more flows here these are premium flows where you either need a work or school account to be able to take advantage of them I'm not going to go through and demo these today but I want to say a quick word about what you can do with these so with a UI flow this is a new uh, feature or functionality that recently came out for power uh, automate what it allows you to do is you could click through a website you could click through an app and you could create automations based on them so one way to think of it is it's like making a macro but in any application or on any website so just to give an example of what you could do with that let's say that you have a whole bunch of docs uh, in Microsoft Word and you want to save them all as PDFs you can use the UI flow recorder to record to opening a doc and then saving a doc as a PDF, and then you could apply that to any number of documents. So with this, it greatly simplifies flows and it makes it really easy. All you have to be able to do is click through the interface and then you could automate a flow. Then lastly, there's another one called the business process flow and this allows you to set up steps that a human will walk through and they won't see the remaining steps until they've completed the initial set of steps that they have. So you can also use that. It's more of a business scenario. So today we're not gonna go into that. That's an overview of how you could start a new power automation or a new new flow from blank. I also have some templates down below and I see some connectors, but I'm gonna click into the full view so we could see what's possible. When I click into templates, this shows me all of the different templates that other people have already created. Now this will probably take care of much of your automation needs. And here I could search for templates. What's nice is it's sorted by popularity. So by default, I could see what most other people use. And the ones at the beginning are pretty compelling and maybe automations that I also wanna take advantage of. Now not only can I look by templates, I'm going to click on connectors here on the left hand side and these are all the different services and apps that I could create automations on and earlier from what I remember I think they said there was something like 354 and by the time you're watching this video there'll probably be even more but this is a nice way I could set up automations between apps. All right, well that was a quick tutorial of how you could use Power Automate to simplify your life. If you feel like you might be able to automate part of the manual tasks that you do in your life, please give this video a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this in the future, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll get a notification anytime new content like this comes out. And lastly, if you wanna see me cover any other topics in the future, leave a comment down below and I'll add it to my list of videos to create. All right, well, thanks a lot for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye.